everybody, welcome to I Heart Cross Stitch. My name is Andrea and this is my fourth cross stitch video. I have so much to share with you today. I'm really, really excited about all the stuff I have to share. I have a framed finish, kind of two framed finishes to show you. And I have a little bit of haul and of course whip updates. And I have a new start, and a, a new start and a finish, which I'll explain that to you. And um, and just like some general chit chat. So I'm really, really excited about all the things that I have to share today. Uh, first off, I'm just going to just share a little bit of the haul that I had. Um, I did go to Hobby Lobby and I, there were so many things there that I really, really like. Um, but even with the 40% coupon, uh, the kit that I was interested in, I still could have gotten it cheaper on Amazon. So I just, this, I didn't get the kit. I will get it on Amazon when I'm ready to stitch it. I'm not one to just buy kits and not do them immediately. <laughs> All right, so, but I did get something. I got um, a package of 32 count Belfast linen. I've never stitched on 32 count before, so I thought I would get a little bit of it in practice, so I'm really excited about that. Um, I also got some floss, the, uh, the DMC variegated floss, the Blue Lagoon collection. I already have the Amazon collection that I think I showed in my second video, and now I have the, the Blue Lagoon. It's more of like tropical and aquatic colors. Um, I did get this beautiful fabric from the Facebook group called Stash and Load. <laughs> I love this fabric so much. It is beautiful. Look at this. It's 28 count Lugana, I believe. Yes, 28 count Lugana, 18 by 26. It's a hand dyed fabrics by Stephanie and the color is water lily and I just think it is the most beautiful thing ever. So pretty. Look at that beautiful pink. I cannot wait to find a design to stitch on this. This is going to be so much fun to stitch on. <clears throat> and then I did go to um, a local needle workshop. Um, I drove an hour south of where I live in here in Florida, and there's an, a needle workshop called Silk Road. And <clears throat> so I went there, and it, it was mostly needlepoint stuff, but he did have some cross stitch as well. And I was able to pick up this design. It's a Paula Vaughn design called Sisters. You can see that there. I thought that was so beautiful. I love Paula Vaughn's designs. I, the majority of the projects that I stitched in my early 20s and in my teens were Paula Vaughn. And I've stitched many of her designs. I have, I'm going to turn it to the back and show some of the things that I have done in the past that that it's either in my closet or I've given it away. But I have this, I believe that this one is in my closet. This one here, I've done that. Or maybe maybe it's kind of like an, a UFO. I don't know if I finished it. I wonder if I did. Which one else? Let's see. Oh, and they don't have the other one that I did. <clears throat> well, anyhow. So I, I picked this up and I got some Anchor Black. And I really, really wanted to buy a whole bunch of other stuff, but I don't have any plans to stitch it anytime soon. So when I'm ready to stitch it, I'll buy it. Okay. And, oh, yes. Can't forget to show you this. <laughs> so uh, some friends of mine are getting married next month. And I really wanted to make them something special. And I, so I've been looking for, 
like wedding samplers and things like that online, and I really hadn't seen anything that really drew my attention, or, or it really wasn't them. And so then I was like, well, you know, I, maybe I could take a design and kind of change it to tailor it to how I think they will like it and how I like it. So that's what I did. And at, I have been, this is a box of silk floss, 100% silk, pure silk threads for your stitching pleasure. That's what it says right here. But it's from Krennic. And this box was at Joanne Fabrics. And I have been looking at it, longing for it for a long time. It's $40 at my Joanne Fabrics. You get 25 half half skeins of silk floss, the storage box, a free chart, an educational silk brochure, and some conversion charts for you. So it was $40, and I had a 60% off coupon, and so I got this. And I, everyone on Floss Tube has always said how soft silk is, and I have believed you. But I really did not know how truly soft it is until you feel it. You really don't understand the, the level of softness until you feel it for yourself. So I was finally able to do that. Now, when I did go to the local needle workshop, Silk Road, he did have a lot of silk floss. But it, wasn't, it really wasn't, wasn't as soft as I expected it to be. But this stuff is super soft. I don't know... If any of you have ever um, stitched with Krennic Silk Floss, but I really enjoyed it. And <clears throat> here's the free pattern that it came with. Sorry for the rustling. So this is what the finished design looked like. And I'm going to apologize for the lighting in here. It is um, it's going to be dark soon outside where I live. So I have my lights on in my bedroom and it's really not good lighting but here is so here's the design and it calls for the lettering to be blue and this ribbon to be blue and it was kind of like a country blue um, and I really didn't like it and I, I didn't I don't think that it they would have liked it either the color blue that it's calling for here so I changed it to be purple and I had no idea that the bride's favorite color is purple. And I chose purple. I chose, I chose, the, so the ribbon here was purple. And all of uh, their, their names and their wedding day was, it, I stitched in like this deep plum color. I wonder if I have any left. I don't even know if they'll be able to see it with the lighting in here. Oh yeah, I only have like, a teeny tiny bit left. Can you see that? Oh, I don't know if it's going to focus. Um, hmm. It's not coming out very well, but it's like a really deep plum kind of color. Okay, going back to this. So what I did was, see down here at the bottom how the hearts are upside down? I didn't like that. I thought that was kind of, I don't know, just didn't make sense to me. So I turned the hearts around on the bottom. I turned them around so that they would match the hearts on top. And uh, I did the United in exactly how it is charted. But see how the word love has hearts inside each letter and little green leaves as well. And I didn't like that at all. I thought it was a little too over the top for me. And I thought it was just too much. It was too much going on in that space. So what I did was I, uh, I stitched the word love without the hearts and the leaves, filling in with the color purple, the, the deep plum that I did in the, <clears throat> in the area where the, 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 um, <laughs> I don't know what I'm trying to say. So the places where there would have been a heart or there would have been leaves where it, it, where it would have made sense to put stitches to create the letter. That's what I did. So it said love. And if you are part of the Facebook group called, um, 
called cross stitch and discuss you would have seen you know what I have it <laughs> I have it right here on my phone but of course I I covered the bride and groom's names and their wedding date so that's what it looks like at the end the finished product that's what it looks like and I framed it myself I, I watched um, oh gosh <laughs> maybe that would be better Oh, I'm like turning all shades of orange here, but uh, I went onto YouTube and I watched Terracy's video, um, videos about how to frame it yourself with the pinning and I did it and it turned out wonderful. She loved it at the shower. Everybody thought it was beautiful and she thought it was beautiful and I was happy. So there's that. And I am so much looking forward to using these silks. Look at this. This is, this, I only used a few <clears throat> of the colors. I used some pinks for the hearts and some greens for the, the border. There was like a, um, like a vine kind of border around it. And then here's some, here are the colors that are left over. These beautiful, beautiful silk. I really enjoyed working with this. It was very delicate. Um, I had to be really careful. Really, really careful. And I really liked it. I stitched it on 28 count cashew linen. It was white cashew linen. It was a piece of linen that I showed, I think, in my previous video. Or maybe my second one. I'm not sure. So there's that. Okay, so I talked about that my haul okay so I have a framed finish to show you from a long time ago um, back in the er I would say the early to mid 90s probably mid 90s I stitched this project for my father and and my stepmother to hang in their house and it it hung in their house for a really 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 long time and then they decided to redecorate their house and it really didn't match their decor and they took it down and I think they were planning on putting it up in the um, the guest bedroom but it didn't make it up and so that was I was perfectly fine with that my feelings were not hurt in the least bit but uh, I, I really wanted it hung somewhere if they weren't gonna hang it then I wanted it to hang it here in my home so I have it to show it to you and I, I stitched this probably in my uh, well definitely in my early 20s and it's one of my, I'll just show it to you. It's, it's a Pullavon, it's called Midsummer's Roses, and I framed this myself a long time ago. Oh, it has the glare because of the glass. Oh. Let's see, oh, I don't think you're gonna be able to see the true. Right. I'm sorry, I'm moving this around and I am trying to get it so that you can't see the glare, but anyhow, it's not working. So there it is, my finished product from the mid-90s, Midsummer's Roses, complete with a glare. So I will hang this in my house for a little bit. And then I have somebody very special that I would like to give that to. Because she has roses in her yard. She lives up in Tennessee. She has roses, and she loves roses. It's her favorite flower, and I think that that would look per perfect in her home. So I'm really excited that I was able to share that with you. I have a list here of things that I want to talk about. So I will, I think at this point, I'm going to talk about just to I'm going to talk about some videos that I have seen to thank people really quick. I've been watching, binge watching cross stitch videos. Um, in my previous shout out, I mentioned I was watching Jennifer's videos. I love Jennifer's videos. I love watching that. I've seen them several times. If I'm in a bad mood, I just watch one of her videos and I laugh and I feel better. I've also been watching Brenda Stitch, Calico, love her videos. Cross Stitch Doyle, uh, Carolyn, of course, Carolyn, and I have, be 
because of the um, videos that I watched for her Terracy's videos that I watched uh, talking about the framing. So now I'm hooked on Terracy's videos and I've been binge watching them. So thank you to everybody who has made videos and again please continue to make them because I love to watch them. Okay, so I think at this point I'm going to do my whip updates and I'm going to start with Paris Market. And this is what it will look like when it's finished. I'm stitching this on 18 count Ada. That's the fabric that came with the kit. And I really haven't gotten as much done on this as I would like to have had at this point. <clears throat> but, you know, I do what I do. I do what I can. So the last time, uh, the last time I recorded a video, I had just, I had done all of this up into this building. So now I'm working on, I have done all of this. This is all new. So I'm working on a tree. Uh, there's a, there's going to be a very large tree right here and I'll, and branches come over and there's some more little buildings here so there's Paris Market again I'm stitching this on 18, 18 count Ada and it's it's a work in progress I'm really I'm kind of getting to a, a little bit of a frustrating point with this because it's so incredibly detailed and I don't know maybe I don't know if that's what's slowing me down or whatever the case may be but it's just it's getting into the really 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 detailed part there's some people in this that are aren't really defined very well they're just little tiny blocks of color that will be able you'll be able to see them more distinctly when I do the back stitching which <laughs> when I started cross stitching forever ago I was always taught to do to do the back stitching at the end to save the back stitching for the end and so I decided to do that with this and I'm thinking it was wasn't really the best idea I am not sorry excuse me my children must be playing <laughs> it scared me they might be running around playing tag in the house oh so I hear somebody crying what time is it my phone. All right, so I'm going to try and talk a little faster. So there is Paris Market. My second whip update is Blue Butterfly, and I printed this out so that you can see what it will look like when it's finished. That's Blue Butterfly, and here is my progress on it. I am parking, so there's going to be a little bit of a mess with the floss. Again, I really don't have as much done on it as I would like to have. Oh gosh, I wonder if you can see this. Hold on, let me fold it really quick. Here we go. Is that better? <laughs> Here we go. All right, so I think the last time I made a video, um, I think, I believe that this is new. I think maybe I just had like a little bit done. So I had all of this and down here. So this is a little bit of the butterfly's wing. I'm finally, I'm glad that I'm finally able to see the, this forming because I cannot wait to see that butterfly just grow into the design. I'm looking forward to that so much. I am stitching this on the worst fabric that I've ever stitched on. I hate this fabric, but I'm sticking with it. I'm not starting this over. If I decided to start this over, I probably would not start it over. I, I would just forget it. Um, it's MCG Textiles. It's called Even Weave, but it's not. 
even, uh, and it's very coarse. Excuse me, I dropped my notes. It's very coarse. It's not really all that soft. I don't know. I just don't like it. It's definitely not... I won't ever, ever, ever stitch on that fabric again. All right, so that's that. Uh, my next whip is flowers in a vase, and this is what it will look like when it's finished. And, excuse me, I have it in a Ziploc bag. So, this is what it will look like when it's done. I have a little bit of a thread sticking out there, so... I'm, I'm sorry, here's here's the progress that I've made. I, so I believe the last video I made, um, I had only gotten this much done. This little corner was complete, so I have all of this now. And I'm really, really loving this so much. I'm stitching this on 28 count... Sorry. 28 count... I'm sorry, let me get it. This. I'm stitching it on this. Charles Craft Monaco. Yes, 28 count Monaco even weave. I love it. It's a really good fabric for me, in my opinion. I really like stitching on it. I really wish that I would have started Blue Butterfly on fabric like this. But you live and learn, right? I love this so very much. Makes me happy when I stitch that. Okay, so the new start. I started as part of a cross stitch and discuss stitch along. I started Stitcher's Retreat, and this is a heaven and earth design. It is absolutely 100% a BAP. And if you don't know what a BAP is, then you're just going to have to ask somebody else. But uh, here's what it will look like when it's finished. There are, okay, I'll just show you again in case you can look. There are, um, there's 78 colors in this, and I know that it says somewhere in here how many pages this design is, but I don't see it on the cover. I don't see it right here. I wonder if it says inside how many pages. Nope. So the um, the original design is 625 stitches wide by 749 stitches high. So it is very, very large. I'm stitching it on 18 count Celandon Green by Ada. <clears throat> However, I am not stitching. You see this? You see this um, picture on the wall right here? So I'm not stitching anything above the frame on the wall. So technically, when it is done, it will look like this. So I saved myself a whole lot of, is that straight? Am I showing it to you straight? I saved myself a whole lot of stitching time just by cutting out that picture on the wall. For me, it was not a necessary piece of the design for me. Um, sorry, this the lighting in here is pretty bad. but So that's what it'll look like when it's done. However, see how the chair ends here on the rug? I'm not doing anything below the bottom of the chair. So this little piece will not be stitched. And right here, there's this, uh, the um, privacy screen. Everything over here. So this little tiny piece right here will not be stitched. But everything else will. And <clears throat> it is a lot of pages. Even though I and cropping it, it is still a lot of pages. And if I do one page a month, it'll take me four and a half years to do this project. So we are in this on for the long haul. 
hopefully I won't be making videos for four and a half to five years so that you can see the finish. But this is how, how what it is, what it looks like so far. Like I, I said, it's a beautiful, beautiful green color. I did that for a reason. And I've only gotten a little bit of it done. This is, I would say, how many stitches am, am I? I? No, I didn't bring it with me. It is, I would say, about 1,200, 13, 14, 13 or 1,400. And you're not, you, it's not really picking up detail because of the lighting in here, so I apologize for that. But there is a lot of black. There is a lot of brown. Right now, the two main colors are black and brown and a little bit of red, surprisingly enough. Um, so the reason why I chose this green color is because, first of all, I'm going to be looking at this fabric for years. This is going to take me years to do. Green is my favorite color, and I wanted to look at, I wanted to be happy with the fabric color because I'm going to be looking at it for a really long time. I did not think that having an antique white or a white or cream or any kind of color like that as the background would be appealing to me to look at for four and a half to five years. I love this color green. I will, I will enjoy this. Also, because of the design, if you kind of look at it, again, it kind of has this antique-y look to it, obviously, and um, I kind of, I really like the green because when I frame it, I want it, I want a little bit of color between the design and the frame. And I wanted that color, I did not want it to be any kind of white. I wanted it to blend in with the design, and I thought that this green would be perfect for that. It is a very, very large piece of fabric. So I'm just going to really quickly share with you the dimensions of the design after I cropped it. And let me, if I can find that in my notebook, I have this cross-stitching notebook that I keep all of my notes in. Of course, now that I need to find everything, I can't. Okay, here it is. <laughs> All right. It is. So, so with the cropping that I did, <clears throat> it's going to be 580 stitches wide and 540 stitches high, which is going to make it so that the finished product, the finished design, will be 39 by 36 and the fabric that I have no I'm erased okay back up back up <laughs> I am I am recording this video on my son's iPad and he does not have iMovie so I have no idea how to edit out anything that I say wrong all right so the design if you add the three inches for the border it will be 39 by 36. My fabric is plenty big, big enough for that, so I have plenty of room. Wait a second, I just put my notes over there when I still need them for the video. <laughs> okay, all right, so I wanna talk really quick about the rotation that I have. I, when I first started, when I picked cross stitching back up again in March, I only had Paris Market and I that's the only whip that I worked on. And then I discovered uh, YouTube and Facebook groups, cross stitch Facebook groups, and I realized that I watched people, pe I watched how other people manage their whips and I added Blue Butterfly. And I realized kind of by noticing my pattern of stitching once I added Blue Butterfly that once I stitched on Paris Market and Blue, Blue Butterfly for three days, I was ready to switch back and forth. So I would do Paris Market for three days, Blue Butterfly for three days, and back and forth. And I, when I, um, I participated in um, some kind of like a contest on the Cross Stitch and Discuss 
Facebook group and I had to stitch on one thing for a whole week. For seven days I had to stitch on one thing so I chose Paris Market and it was very difficult. By the end of the seventh day I never, I felt like I never want to stitch on Paris Market again because I was so sick of it. And then I added flowers in a vase in, and I, um, I loved it so much that I thought if I just stitch what I want to stitch, I will stitch on flowers in a vase and I will, I will not stitch on Blue Butterfly or Paris Market. And I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to neglect my other two projects um, because I'm giving all my attention to one. And so I decided that I was going to do a three-day rotation, that I was going to stitch on one project for three days and then switch, and then three days and then switch, three days and then switch. And now that I've added Stitcher's Retreat, I'm so glad that I have that rotation in place because... If I didn't, I would stitch on Stitcher's Retreat all the time and not want to do anything else. So, that's my rota rotation. I know that some people don't have rotations, some people don't like them. Um, I, it works for me because otherwise I would, I would um, probably... I don't know. I'm, I haven't stitched on Flowers in a Vase for more than three days at a time. But, um, so I can't say that if I did it for more than three days, I would be sick of it because I've never done it before. I haven't stitched on it for more than three days at a time. But, um, so that's my thing. All right, what else did I want to talk about? What else, what else, what else? Oh, okay. So just, okay, all right, so Thank you for watching. If all you wanted to see was cross stitch stuff, thank you for watching and you can end the video now because everything else will be non cross stitch related. So thank you. Bye. <laughs> all right. So if you're still watching, I wanted to share with you that on December 5th was my 23rd wedding anniversary and I wanted to show you what my husband got for me. Do you see it? It's a little key. It's a heart at the top with a, a little sparkly diamond thing, and it's a key. <laughs> and I love it so much. I love this present he got for me. And I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the significance of this. So you know how um, breast cancer, um, the symbol for breast cancer awareness is like this pink ribbon. And a lot of different um, organizations have symbols uh, to bring awareness to their different causes. And I have a ra very rare skeletal disorder called Klippel Feil Syndrome. And it's named after the two scientists that discovered this medical condition. And um, it's also known as KFS. So the shortened version of Klippel Feil Syndrome is KFS. And since it's a skeletal di disorder, the symbol to raise awareness, so the symbol for KFS awareness is the skeleton key. So that's what the skeleton key is. And a little bit about Klippelvile syndrome, because I would like to bring awareness to that. It's a, like I said, it's a skeletal disorder, and I did not know I had it until I was in a car accident back in 2009. And, um, the doctors did an x-ray of my neck and they found that I have fused vertebrae in my neck and it was congenital. It's, I was born with my vertebrae fused together so <clears throat> there is no disc separating some of the vertebrae in my neck. It's just all together, all fused together. And I also have cervical ribs which are ribs above your collarbone. So if you touch your collarbone and go up a little bit, I have ribs above my collarbone. And I also have some other issues in going on with my spine. Um, but also, I wanted to say that not everybody with Klippelfile syndrome looks the same. If you've ever seen a person that looks like they have no neck, it looks like their head is just kind of like sitting on their body a little bit 
and they looks like they don't have a neck, it's very, very possible that that person has KFS. And there are people with necks longer than mine that have KFS, and I have a little bit of a shorter neck. So my goal was to just raise awareness, KFS awareness, and um, I think that's it. So thank you for watching and keep making cross stitch videos because I love watching them and thank you so much. Thank you so much for everybody that has subscribed and liked and commented. I really, 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 really appreciate it. And you all mean so much to me. So don't forget to love what you stitch and stitch what you love.